Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vital Vlog. And today we are blasting Drug Honkies, Cloak of Skies. So fucking good. Killer, killer, god flesh influence death doom. Which doesn't sound like it would work, but trust me, this is a total fucking mind fuck here. It's... Seriously, look at that artwork to begin with. Paolo Giarde just absolutely killed it on this. Like, it's just riddled with drugs and just... I, I, I love the fucking detail. It, it's amazing, but... This also happens to have a Justin Broderick remix. And, um, that's... Just, I put on side D with the title track, Cloak of Skies, and then there's the Justin Broderick remix of Pool of Failure. I won this record off the band by doing a um, Facebook review of a track, and um, I guess I hit on all the points they wanted, and I won a t-shirt and this album, and it's fucking badass. It seriously kicks fucking ass. Very, very trippy, heavy fucking stuff. I dig it. And it just reminds me of how much I love God Flesh's self titled EP. Holy fuck. This is the original Earache version, so this is not the six track uh, Swordfish version, but this is so fucking good. This is the 1990 Earache version. This is one of the heaviest things you will ever listen to. Total early extreme error swans worship. Like, fucking wow. Like, Justin and Ben are no fucking joke. Like, when it comes to heaviness and the machine. You know, one of the first bands to pretty much use the original drum kit from hell. I'm sure that's not true, but, you know, Godflesh, they, they were adding industrial music to extreme music and coming up with just some of the bleakest, heaviest fucking sounding atmospheres to ever come out of Birmingham, England. And Justin, you know... He was such, a, and is such a staple to extreme music, like, he was on the A-side of Napalm Death Scum. Like, and then he went to Head of David, and then I'm pretty sure Godflesh was after Head of David. I'm not 100% the timeline with Godflesh. I just was listening to the Drug Honky album and was just like, yo, Godflesh fucking rules. <laughs> Because, <laughs> like, the one track has, like, just, it just really, like, reminds me of Godflesh. So I just was like, you know what? Like, let's put on some fucking actual Godflesh. But the EP here, it's like, they tamed it with Street Cleaner by kind of dialing in the sound where... On here, this was like originally recorded and I'm pretty sure released in 1988, where um, Street Cleaner was 89, I think. I'm not 100, yeah, I'm pretty sure Street Cleaner was 89. And uh, it's just fucking wow. Like, besides Swans and the beginning of Napalm Deaths uh, from Enslavement to Obliterate, Ob 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 ah. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, Weak Minds, the intro track to the second Napalm Death album, is straight up Swan's worship, but Godflesh took that a step further and just went the fucking full nine, but at the same time added their own fucking sorrow and their own vibes to the music, and it ended up creating just the bleakest, heaviest fucking tunes that pretty much were ever recorded up to this time. Like, back then, to be on Earache Records was no fucking joke. Like, nowadays, the label, in my opinion, kind of relies off of older bands. 
I'm sorry, but that's just the way I, I see it. I mean, their roster is okay, I guess. I don't even know who's on it. But this is back when that Made in England sticker fucking meant something. Like, Eric Records was no fucking joke back in the day, like, at all. And I respect, you know, the fact that they still exist. Even though it took three copies of Sleep's Holy Mountain to get to work on my turntable. That's a tale for a different day. But just look how young they were. I mean, Ben looks old, but Justin just fucking two stoners. Like, they both were, I'm pretty sure that they both were vegetarians, but like, yeah, Justin fucking rules. The, dude, the dude's just a genius. I think he's a fucking musical genius when it comes to extreme music. Like, you give the dude some tunes and you're like, hey, like, you know, do your thing pretty much. Like, and he'll make it fucking sound so sick. Like, if you ever listen to Justin's uh, Oceanic remix on um, Isis Oceanic remixes and interpretations... It's, it's one of the heaviest things that Justin's ever done, but it's right up there alongside this. Like, this is fucking so heavy. Like, starting things off with Avalanche Master Song, it's just like... BOOM! Fuck you! Like, it's so fucking heavy, and I love it. It's everything that to me represents god flesh like if you were like like normally some people would probably if you were like hey what's god flesh sound like i mean most people will probably be like oh like nine inch nails pretty hate mach pretty hate machine meets swans because that's what it is but at the same time it's like the fucking soundtrack to the end of your life like, seriously, this is some oppressive, just fucking vicious shit when it gets down to it. Like, the vibe of this music is ugly. Like, it's pretty much like what the soundtrack to Eraserhead should sound like. Like, if you watched Eraserhead and just played this in the background, I'm sure it would go perfectly, but... You have Avalanche Master Song, which, like I said, it's, to me... The, probably the best God Flesh song. Veins, Godhead, Spinebender, Weak Flesh, Ice Nerve Shatter. Now that's where the Swordfish Records EP stopped. Then you have Wounds and Street Cleaner 2 on the Earache version, which is cool as shit, because you get two extra tracks. But. This was 1990, and, uh, it's fucking great. Like, I can't recommend this enough, like, it's less guitar, it, there's still, there's way more electronics, but, like, being used in a heavy fucking way, like, whereas Street Cleaner, I feel like they kind of tamed this Godzilla of a sound that they had going and you know figured out like where to put like you know riffs a lot better and stuff it's just a really really fucking interesting start for god flesh like when you listen to this and then you go and listen to a world lit only by fire which is their latest release like their you know post reunion album and the ep that came before it, Fall and Decline, Decline and Fall, whatever, they're both fucking brilliant. Again, some of the best stuff Justin's done since Jezu. Like, I think Jezu Conqueror is when I kind of stopped following Justin's work, because he was doing so much of it, like, and I don't know, I, I just needed a little break from Justin for a while, and then... When Garth gave me those Godflesh albums, I was just like, yo, Street Cleaner, boom. And EP just... I, I forgot how fucking good it was. Like, I used to have this shirt. I wish I still fucking had it, but... It happens. 
But it's awesome that Godflesh every now and again pops back up. Like, they're playing Street Cleaner in its entirety. Like, in New York. Gonna try to have to make it out to that. That's in, like, November, I think. So, it can definitely happen. But, this is one of those albums where I do not have a song that takes me away from the overall atmosphere and vibe of total fucking desolation in a sonic form and that's god flesh's self-titled ep like just from the minimalistic art approach everything like it's just fuck yeah so goddamn good and i can't pick a favorite track on here but if i had to and you had a gun to my head i would just say avalanche master song and then uh probably veins awesome awesome stuff by justin broderick and ben green in the form and you know what i'll give the drum machine credit machine i tip my invisible hat to you and i tip my hat to the invisible original drum kit from hell because it sounds fucking so sick it's just fucking relentless and awesome and it really does, like, even though, like, Swans at one point had, like, two fucking drummers and stuff, this just uses that total machine-like sound and industrial vibe. Like, if you look at photos of Birmingham, England in the 80s, and then listen to Godflesh, it's fucking crazy. Like, they really, really capture the sound of that city better than any other band and yeah, I'm talking Black Sabbath too, just because this is so machine-like and it's coming from an industrial place and having those two dudes, you know, use their settings as inspiration alongside tons of LSD and tons of repeated viewings of altered states, but Godflesh is fucking awesome and I'm glad Justin left napalm death and i'm glad that head of david didn't work out because we have god flesh in our lives and i'm glad we do and we also have jesu and justin has so many other just projects it's amazing but this is fucking one of the best the god flesh self-titled ep on earache records fucking absolute 10 out of 10 and uh we were listening to Drug Honky's Cloak to Skies. I meant Cloak of Skies because I'm an idiot and read it backwards. Dough. But, uh, yeah. Look at that fucking artwork. Amazing music. This is just total again. Like, the Godflesh influence mixed with death metal and doom. It's just an awesome awesome fucking i hate using the pun but cocktail of fucking awesomeness heaviness and just oppressiveness drug honky fucking oh my god this is such an underrated good album and i'm gonna put the link below check it out drug honky cloak of skies Fuck yeah on Transcending Obscurity Records. Again, I won this, but that doesn't take away the fact that Justin Broderick did a remix. And this is fucking an awesome double LP. And I, hi I highly recommend picking it up before they're gone forever. Thanks for watching. As always, hail. <laughs>